how's it going? It's Elena. Today we're doing a video that's a little bit different from my other videos, but I've been wanting to make this for months. It's important information to share. It's an important conversation to have that I just don't think people my age, or at least in my sphere, talk about nearly enough. And today we're talking about finances. If you're new here, I'm 23. I'm fully financially independent. I have been for the last like one or two years. I got my undergraduate degree in business back in California and now I live in New York City. I do social media full time as well as other media consulting. And that's that's me. While I'm not like a financial advisor or anything along those lines, I don't feel like I don't see enough people my age really talking about things like this. And so I figured in order to hopefully help you guys, if you're in a similar place as me, I did a lot of research, compiled a bunch of things I found and kind of tried to simplify it down to hopefully give you some good tips moving forward. So without further ado, these are the financial mistakes to avoid in your 20s. So number one is save for retirement and the earlier the better. This one is like near and dear to my heart. I opened up my Roth IRA or Roth IRA when I was like 19 or 20 in 2016 and I was a sophomore in college. Um, my brother recommended that I open it up and after doing research, I was like, this sounds like a very good idea to do. The biggest thing we got going for us in our 20s is time. And the sooner that we start saving and investing for the future, the greater the payoff is gonna be. So without getting too technical here, it's all about the power of compounding. Compound interest is the time value of money. So the earlier you put coins into a retirement fund, the longer it has time to grow. Let's say you are about 25 years old and you decide to invest $100 a month into a Roth IRA that earns a 12% annual return. So let's say you do this for 40 years until you're 65. When you retire at 65, that amount of money will be close to a million dollars, a million dollars. So if the same person were to start investing $100 a week at 35 until you reached age 65 and to retire then, that money would only grow to about $300,000, which means you lose $700,000 within that time span. And that is the power of investing in retirement fund earlier and let it grow over time. So if you are working a nine to five salary job, check and see if your company offers a 401k. It most likely does. A lot of companies offer a certain matching percentage to the amount of money that you invest in your 401k, which means that they're literally going to give you free money. So there's no reason to not jump on that. You gotta make sure you maximize what they match. A lot of companies offer up to 50% of what you're putting in. So let's say you got your salary, you put 5% of your salary towards your 401k. That means that the company that you're working for will match 2.5% as well. So that could be thousands of dollars that that company is matching for your retirement. And if you don't act on that, you're literally like wasting an opportunity to make and save more money. Even if you don't have a salary job, you can still start a retirement fund to save for your future and start putting away those coins. When I was in college, I think I tried to put away $50 a month and maybe some months 100, but that was really difficult for me. But even that small amount really is gonna add up over time. And now that I'm making more money and have like more of a full-time salary, I'm able to put a lot more and see that grow over time. So start your retirement, do it now. It's worth it, I promise. is to have an emergency fund. This is super important. I feel like as like a 20 something, it's really easy to feel like, eh, nothing's ever gonna happen to me. But you need to have an emergency fund. Money set aside to cover any expenses when like life throws crap at you so you don't get into debt. It could be anything from a medical expense or like a car crash or you lose your job and you need money set aside for those emergencies. The recommended amount that came up a lot when I was researching was about $1,000 and to start there, ideally you have up to three months of your salary saved up. You should build your emergency fund over time and maybe start with one month salary and then slowly build it up to three months salary and even six months salary. So you got that little nest egg for when times of trouble come around. So next we're talking about credit cards. And for one, I recommend getting a credit card, but obviously two, do not get in credit card debt. So I feel like as a like millennial Gen Zer, I always kind of grew up with hearing this narrative of like credit cards are bad, like don't get into debt, etc. Which is an important thing to hear, but to the point where I was like super scared to even get a credit card and many of my friends were as well. And we waited a really long time to open our first credit card. But the problem with that is the older you get, you need a credit card to survive in life. And so for example, for this apartment, I didn't have a guarantor. So I signed the lease on my own and I had to prove that I had a good credit score. So thank goodness I signed up for a credit card like two years ago and I built a good credit score over time so I was able to get this apartment. Within getting a credit card, there are a 
lot of benefits. You can get travel points, you can get hotel points. I've like literally gotten full covered airplane rides via the points I've made through credit card purchases. But obviously with that massive disclaimer, don't get yourself into debt. The way I view my credit card is as if it's a debit card. So I don't look at the like allotted credit that I have access to of like thousands of dollars. I just see it as like, this is like my debit card. I'm only gonna put on there what I need to and what I already have the money to spend so I can pay it off within the month. So I put like my groceries on there and also a staying within a like small-ish utilization rate of the credit card, which is like another thing. You have an amount of money you can spend on your credit and you only wanna spend within a certain utilization rate of that credit amount that you are, have access to. Often your first credit card too has a very small line of credit. So mine only had $500, which is like a very small amount for a credit card, but I kept that up for a year, kept a really good score on it and then within a year I opened up a new one that would give me a lot more benefits so any kind of debt but especially credit card debt comes with interest so the amount you spend and you don't pay off just grows and grows with time so spend within your means you're young you don't want to get into a ton of debt that's gonna follow you throughout your life and hold you back from the things you want to do next tip is don't spend too much on rent. Again, as I was reading, I found this quote from this study that said, younger adults are spending a stunning amount of money on rent. Rent sucks up about 45% of their income during this first critical decade in the workforce. That is a lot of money. So kind of diving into like background on that, there's this like very famous budget rule that was actually popularized by Elizabeth Warren and it's the 50-30-20 rule. This rule basically states that you should spend 50% of your after tax income on your needs and obligations that you have to do. So this includes rent, groceries, transportation, bill, like your living expenses and essentials. So next is 30%, so it's everything like outside of the essentials. So like eating and drinking with friends, getting a face mask, traveling, etc. And then the 20% is saving and paying off debt payments. So that's the 50, 30, 20 rule, which I think is a great thing to abide by. And then there's another really popular rule like back from 1970s, it's a little outdated, but I think it's something that a lot of people still adhere to. So the 30% rule says that you should ideally not spend more than 30% of your monthly income. So let's say you make $5,000 a month, you shouldn't be spending more than $1,500 a month of rent. Make sure you're looking for places within your means. It's just an important tip, especially for your young 20s. Next is to not buy a new car. And I learned this one also from my brother, so shout out to Quinn for giving me all the money tips. This one doesn't really apply to me in this moment because I don't have a car and I just recently sold my car, which was my baby. It was a 1999 Honda CRV. I loved her. Buying a new car is one of the worst financial decisions you can make because your car depreciates so much once you drive it off the lot. A car in general is a depreciating asset, which means that over time it just loses more and more value, aka more and more money. It's best to buy a car that's several years older, that functions well, that you can just drive into the ground. You're gonna have to pay insurance and interest on a new car loan, and often for a new car, it's more than if it was for a used car. So basically, just never buy a new car. Always try to buy a used car. It's just a much better investment. Next is always price compare. Groceries, food, furniture, clothing. Don't just reach for the first thing you see and go from there. Again, we're young, like we don't need the nicest furniture or clothing or like the bougiest, best food from Whole Foods. Chances are that the apartment we're living in right now, we might be for one, two, three years. This isn't our like forever home. It doesn't make sense to decorate as such. Of course, make your place cozy, but you don't need to get the nicest couch. I'm all about using apps like OfferUp or Let It Go to find things second hand. Whenever I go to the grocery store, again, this is something I learned from early age, was to always like price compare. They could be saving just even two or three dollars by looking to see what deals are going on, the difference between the like name brand and the off brand item. And while it may seem kind of futile because it's just like one or two dollars, those one or two dollars adds up and over time can be Become a large amount of money and I think it's good to just learn those kind of shopping principles now and take those forward with you throughout the years. Next is spend like you're broke and invest like a businessman. I feel like it's easy to go from like college broke mentality like, oh, I'm making a salary job and be like, I can spend all this coin now. It's another thing I see friends doing. It's easy to be like, I am broke and I can barely afford to pay for rent. They're like, oh no, I'm making all this money. I'm gonna go buy those $200 pairs of shoes. So I think there's a lot of value in kind of holding on to a much more frugal mindset if you want money 
in the long run and if you want to have a good savings. Again, investing is very important. That can look like investing in your retirement. That can look like using something like the Acorn app to make small little investments. Eating out a lot is expensive. Drinking and going out on the weekends is really adds up. Those are all just things to keep in mind um, because again, every dollar counts. Next is create a current budget. It's so important to be aware of your cash flow and like where your money is going. I don't do well with having a very specific allotted amount for like different sections, but I'm always, always aware of my cash flow. So I use Mint, which basically allows you to go through every single expense you've ever made and it categorizes it. So down to the dollar, I can see where is my money going. I like to review at the end of every month and make a spreadsheet and put the final amounts into different categories so I can know exactly where I spent my money and to be able to kind of see where I can cut back in the future. Otherwise, it's so easy to just kind of like tap out and just give your credit card or your debit card over whenever and not really know know how or where you're spending. So definitely create some type of budget and manage and view your cash flow. So next is diversifying your revenue streams. This might not apply to everyone necessarily, but let's say you do have a really big financial goal, you're trying to pay off a ton of debt, or you just don't have a super well-paying job and you want to put aside money, look into some type of side hustle to make more money. There's so many different odd jobs in line, maybe in the city that you're living where you can make a few extra dollars if you're willing to give up certain evenings or weekends depending on what your schedule's like, like anything from dog walking to Uber driving to going online and offering services as like a graphic designer. I was really inspired by following Asia Dang's journey to becoming debt free. One thing that I was really inspired by was the fact that while she had, you know, like a significant job, she was still doing all these little side jobs that maybe weren't making as much money, but she was so committed to paying off her debt that she was willing to diversify her revenue streams, do these little side hustle gigs in order to save up. Depending on what your job is and its security, it's important to not just be dependent on one single stream of revenue. Okay, next is not setting financial goals. This is something I'm definitely working on. So I was speaking to some people older than me to get some of their tips. One of them was to set some like more specific financial goals. Because if you never stop to think about what you want to accomplish in five or 10 years, chances are you won't really accomplish anything by the end of that time period. I feel like there's a lot of power in the very act of identifying a certain goal and starting to save in your 20s. That will, for one, build a really good practice of learning to save for something specific, but also help you accomplish something big, like maybe saving for a nice car or investing in property. But trust me, you can never save enough. It's not about having this like crystal clear idea of like, I want this exact thing. It's more about setting goals and prioritizing the things that you might want down the road. And then the last, which is a little cheesy, but I think is an important one. When it does come to spend money, be wary about where you spend your money and try to invest in the things that you actually like reap benefits from and will bring you joy. I know, so cheesy and cliche. For me, like I said, I'll see friends buying like $100, $200 pair of shoes, which is crazy, but I feel like I see a lot more people doing it than you'd expect. Like, I personally would rather take a portion of that money and invest it in a gym membership and focus on my health and physical and like mental well-being. A lot of people go out on the weekends and will kind of haphazardly spend a ton of money by eating out at brunch and dinner and going out for drinks. Might as well take a portion of that money and spend it on a ticket and go travel and see the world. But I do feel like there's so much value in investing in like experiences or if you want to like grow a skill or a hobby over a materialistic good that again is like a depreciating asset. Investing in those things that are gonna bring you a little bit more joy. So those were all my tips of things to avoid and learn from as you go about trying to figure out money and finances in your 20s. I know it's like really confusing and hard and they don't teach you enough about it in school and I'm still figuring it out. Those are some steps in my own life that I really try to take. Also too, there's a wealth of knowledge out there for free via podcasts and books. I can leave some stuff in my description below if you wanna to continue to do research and learn on your own, which I highly would recommend. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope that was interesting and not too dry and hopefully informative. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, bye-bye.